Hello everybody, this is Petey from Bergsberg Arcade at BergsbergArcade.net and here we are with another video for terrain. Now we've already taken a look at using just the basic Unity terrain, but there's a lot of tools and plugins out there that actually help you create your terrain. And today we're going to go ahead and take a look at one. I'm going to take a look at, well, probably one of the oldest, one of the, at least my favorites. And that's the terrain toolkit. Now I'll go ahead and leave a link down below where you can go check this out. But right now it's on, uh, Google code and if you just come to the download link you can go ahead download the zip and that is going to give you a folder with the unity package in it now I've already got unity open so all I'm going to do is just double click the train toolkit package and it will import it now there is one thing to note here that there are a few bugs it hasn't been updated in ages uh, but the bugs Art Game Breakers. The plugin itself still works, still does what it has to do, but there are a lot of warnings coming up. And I guess if you really want to delve in, you could actually go ahead and just update this and get it working fine. There's a few display bugs as well, but that's fine. They're very easy to get around. Now, this here is not meant as a tutorial on how to use Train Toolkit, just a quick demonstration on uh, basically what it can do and how I personally like to use it. I'm going to go ahead, full screen this, get a few extra pixels in height. And I'm going to go ahead and make a whole new scene. We'll save this scene off. I like to save it in a different folder. Uh, this is Terrain Toolkit. And I'll go ahead and just create a new scene. Oh, sorry, a, a new terrain. There we go, and I'm gonna go ahead and take this train and put it in with the train toolkit. Just so I keep the train separate and I know which goes where. Now again, I wanna go in and turn off that lighting. Do I have my lighting tab open? I do. Let's just go turn that off now. All right, train toolkit. You have this folder, it's got a few things in it. Uh, let's make sure we're clicking on the right one right here. Uh, you never need to open any of this stuff up. Everything's done through an editor. So let's go ahead and select this new terrain we created. Go over to the inspector. We're going to add a component. And I'm just going to type in terrain. And terrain toolkit is what we want to add. And I'm going to shrink everything else up. I'll make sure it's at zero. Uh, we don't need to work with that. Uh, this is it. So the first tab here, create, you have different ways to create. And I'm going to have to go ahead and stretch this out a bit. Uh, but it does give you three different ways to create and you can go through and pick different presets but you can also just go ahead and customize them yourself yeah, of course you can go ahead and set some features this is basically the shape of the peaks i'm going to go ahead and i usually like something like rolling hills or rough plains it's still rough plains now this gives me again the default so i'm going to go ahead and generate the train uh, we can go ahead and look down here there's different types for cell neighborhood. But I'm just gonna go ahead and hit generate per and train. We come back and here we go. Now right off the bat, this looks really great, but if you went ahead and drop the first person character controller in there, it's way too steep. But that's good. actually, hmm. Now most of the trains you are gonna make are gonna be this kind of shape where it's sunken in the middle or raised in the middle. Let's go ahead and we'll try a couple other ones. Actually, I kind of like this one a little bit better. It's got like that little mountain over there. So let's work with this one. I'm going to move on to the next tab. Uh, there's a few others here we're going to be looking at. And again, these just create other shapes. If you want to go ahead, we'll, we'll take one look. Let's do rolling hills. Yeah, that's how you get on this one. Now we can adjust that in here. And when I get back to the pearl, we'll take a look at that. I like that one too, actually. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm actually going to go with this one. Yeah. So let's go ahead. We'll hit the road tab, and you have different types of roads you can use here. And of course, we have different uh, presets for them. So I'm just going to go ahead and let's take a fast, harsh one for this one. And again, like I said, you can go ahead and customize this. So I'm just going to go run through, add some erosion, and we see how it changed a little bit. I'm going to add some hydraulic erosion to it. Uh, let's do a full one. And I'm going to do a low rainfall soft earth. 
Again, depending on the type of world you want to create. Now, one of the reasons why I'm doing this one first is it's just so simple to use. And we'll see how it changes a bit there. Of course, feel free to play around with it. Control Z will undo. And I'll come down to tidal, and I want a low tide. So low tide with strong waves. Now this is going to affect the lower parts, and I don't think I actually have anything low enough. Yeah, I had nothing low enough anyway to be affected by that. Now we could lower it, and we will be looking at that in a bit. And I might come back to tide then, but for now let's go ahead, uh, let's make it an easterly wind. We'll go ahead, and on the east side it's going to rough up some of those mountains. I'll go ahead and let it. Now normally I usually normalize first, and then do all these, but I just kind of want to go across the top here. Well, except for texturing. So some of these options might take a little longer depending on the speed of your computer and the complexity that you're setting up. There we go. Wow, look at that. That really made a huge difference, didn't it? So I'm going to come back to Create. And I'm going to go to Normalize. And here we go. We have the minimum height and maximum height and the blend. So the blend is basically, you know, how strong the effect is going to be. I'm going to set this minimum height to, I don't know, half the height that it is now. Yeah, let's try it again. Let's try it a quarter of the height. There we go. Looks like it might be getting closer to something I can use. I want a bit more. Again, once you drop your first person control in there and start running around, you can really get a, a better idea of the scale. And let's go ahead, select it one more time. I'm going to go down a little bit more, maybe 1.5. There we go. Something like that. Now, this is where I usually go in and start doing my road now, but I've already done it. But I'm going to come back in to the smooth. And of course, you have uh, the ability to smooth out some rough spots. So let's you know, look right here. Let's see, this erosion was too much. You don't like it. We can come in. Uh, just how many iterations in the blend strength. I'm just going to keep it the way it is. And it smooths it out just a little bit. See the effect going on? Well, let's go ahead and jump into textures. Now, here's where we get into some of the display bugs. But that's okay. So, I'm just going to go ahead and add the first one, which is actually the cliff texture. It should actually be over here. And, of course, you know, the first texture you add, it's going to texture everything in here for you. I'm going to go ahead and add four textures. So, two, three, four. And if you add four, it does kind of space melt better for you. So, think of these textures from the ground up. So the, the first texture is going to be the lowest texture, and then you work your way up to the top of the mountain. So we did download some textures already. So I'm going to come in here, select that terrain again, and I want some sort of sand like a beach. So I'll go ahead and grab this one here, sand with pebbles. And I'm just going to drag and drop it in here. Looks pretty good. Uh, next up, I want, uh, let's, go, let's go for some grass. Uh, we'll just do the grass hill. And then we'll move into something. Well, I know I want uh, rock for the top. So let's do uh, rock moss. And I just realized that the first texture is actually supposed to be my cliff texture. My bad. So now we'll go ahead and take the grass hill, put it here. Then we're going to go ahead and take our sand. Yeah, we'll go with this one as well. And of course, you can just hit uh, apply procedural textures. And by default, you have the different heights and strengths up here. So let's just start at the top. Actually, no, we'll start at the bottom for the textures. This basically says you know, what height the texture starts and ends at. So you don't have to worry about the cliff because the cliff texture, I guess maybe I should have left it a little higher. We would have seen the cliff texture a bit better. But we'll lower that down after. So let's go ahead. We'll start with texture one. Let's say it stops at, uh, I don't know, 0.1. Go ahead and hit apply. And two starts at, I want a little bit of a blend. So let's say one, three. Let's see how much of a blend that's going to give us. And it really is just season to taste. So I'm really going to have to bring that down. Because if that's one, three, I really shrank the texture down quite a bit, didn't I? Or the, the terrain, sorry. Now you can go back and just raise it again. Let's go back to two, five. There we go. And I'll jump back into the textures. We'll hit apply procedural texturing again. That's a bit better, but it still looks like it's going to be too high here. So I'm going to go 0 0.05 for my sandy beaches. And of course, I am going to move this down. 
uh, maybe 0.3 different, so 0 0.08. I don't want a lot of sandy beach. You know, I could go ahead and put water in here. Uh, let's move up. Two is going to end at, let's say, 0.2. And we'll start at 0.23 for the stone. And we'll go ahead, and there we go. We're going to have to adjust it a bit more because that's just not enough rock. So again, I'll just come in to create. Now, as far as the normalization goes, you really do want to throw your your character in there so you can get a, an idea of scale. But this is just for demonstration purposes. I'm going to go ahead and make it a bit bigger. So come into textures, hit apply procedural texture again. There we go. We got a bit more rock up there. Uh, I'm actually going to pick the start distance. Or actually, no, let's go with the end distance. A little bit uh, lower. I want more blend. There we go. Like that much better. Now let's start working on this cliff thing. So let's find a nice sharp cliff, like something right about here. And I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, well, when does my cliff start? At what angle? And when does it end? So I'm going to lower this, say it starts at 35. And let's go to... I'll we'll keep it at 75. Let's go to 80, 80 degrees. And you see how it starts to pop in a bit more? There we go. If we lower it down a bit more, it starts showing up more and more. Now keep in mind this texture, you don't have the ability to adjust its tiling. At least not in here. So rock textures generally look better if they're scaled up. At least for looking at it far away, when you're up close, it looks worse. But it's just one of those trade-offs. But yeah, here we go. We've uh, got a basic train that we can actually start working with. You can actually go ahead, say if you're done, you decided you know, this is a great place to start molding my train. And this is not meant to actually replace the Unity train engine. I just use it as a place to start. So instead of starting with that flat train, I've now got this to work with. So maybe, I don't know, maybe I was gonna put like a little village or something like that on the hill up here. and Or maybe even down here, we're gonna have our like lake or something. It's just a starting point for me. And that's what I like the most about it. And what we can do is actually go ahead and open up the train tools. I'm gonna to come to these textures. I am actually gonna take the rock texture, double click it, and I'm gonna adjust the, well, we don't have normals, but if we did have normals, since we can't add them down here, we can't add them here. Now, keep in mind, this tool was created before they had normal maps for the train engine. So yes, it is an old tool, but it's one that's so easy to use. It's just a few sliders and a few buttons, and you get something really good just to start off with. But I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this, I don't know, 40 by 40, maybe even bigger, 60 by 60. Yeah, I like the look of that from afar. Of course, like I said, when you do get up close, the texture doesn't look as good, but it's a trade-off. If you want hills in the distance, I'd go with the bigger texture. And of course, if you had a normal map, you could also add to that. If you want to add it, make it look a little bit more metallic or smooth. But I'm just gonna go ahead and hit apply there. And uh, my train is ready to start editing. I can go in there and start molding things the way I want. Uh, let's go. I'm going to shrink this down. Bring up my brush size. I'm going to bring my opacity down a bit. And actually, I can. Yeah, we'll, we'll stick here first. And I'm free to start doing what I want. I did not want to do that. Let's actually make a nice grass. Let's make a dirt road. That'd be kind of fun. So I'm going to take down the target strength uh, and the opacity a bit. Probably need that brush size down. Let's say I was going to put a village here. Maybe I want a nice little dirt road. Too strong. Maybe I want to start brushing in like a dirt road or something like that that comes up here. And of course, you could also do a little bit of more terraforming if you feel the need to as well. But there we go. Hopefully, you can add this tool to your arsenal and. Uh, It'll help you out and give you a great spot to start with creating your trains. Anyway, as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. 
So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles and falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>